Dr. Pyeong Lee, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, we are ready to enjoy your demonstration of PF closures. So would you please show us the, uh, let us know the case and introduce your team. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Dr. Pyeong Lee from Asan Medical Center. I'm very honored to give you the first live case of PF closure uh, today. We have our um, team here. We have uh, Dr. Hanbit Park, uh, a senior f uh, fellow um, of our uh, team. And we have uh, Seung Ah Lee here, uh, who would uh, interpret the echocardiography uh, during our case. So uh, I would like to um, briefly uh, notice that uh, we have prepared two cases today. One uh, which we will have, I think, have a deep discussion with the indication of PFO closure and the other things that we focused, uh, another case that we have focused on uh, uh, majorly on the techniques of PFO closure. So the first case um, we are doing right now, this patient, have, uh, uh, this patient is a 72-year-old female patient, so a little bit uh, old, uh, older age of patient um, uh, compared uh, with the uh, 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 when we consider with the indication of PFO closure. So she was um, uh, admitted to another hospital recently uh, because of recurrent episodes of gait disturbance. That episode occurred about three times. Uh, first one occurred at January this year. The second episode was at uh, uh, May. And the third was at uh, June. So um, at that hospital, uh, the, uh, the referring physician noticed us that um, at that time, they have, uh, 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 they have performed some neurology examination, and um, they confirmed that they, at that time, the patient has some trunk, uh, trunk ataxia and gait disturbance. Uh, during uh, the admission, uh, the symptom relieved within 12 hours, and at that time, they uh, had some uh, workup with her. Uh, brain M MR imaging showed um, no definite finding of acute inf infarction. Uh, they said that it was a TIA event. Uh, they had some ECG monitoring and all other stuff, the MRAs, and there was no definite abnormali uh, abnormality in uh, intra and extra uh, cranial vessels. So um, they did the TCD um, and uh, found out there was a, a grade 4 shunt and uh, referred the, the patient to us to uh, have some uh, further e uh, evaluation and management. So. Um, this is a brief history. She doesn't have any uh, risk factor except uh, hypertension, which was well controlled, and uh, no other um, previous history of medical uh, condition. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, so this uh, patient's clinical presentation is a recurrent episodes of uh, TIA three times recently with um, a high risk feature of PFO. Uh, uh, she went. Uh, she came to our hospital, and we performed the echocardiography. Next, uh, next slide. Next slide, please. So, um, Doctor Lee, uh, Lee will interpret this um, echo for us. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, transthoracic echocardiography with uh, agitated cell line test. As you can see, the large bubble goes to the left heart through the uh, PFO, and is suggestive of. Uh, patent of foramen ovale. Okay, next. Next, next slide. And we performed the uh, transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, as you can see, the interseptum looks higher emboli risk feature. Uh, it shows high mobility of interseptum, and after uh, valsalva release, large amount of bubbles go through the uh, patent foramen ovale and they go to the left atrium. But the aspect of procedure, uh, it looks a simple PFO. The length of PFO is quite short, and uh, interatriceptum is not too thick. And we can see the uh, uh, gap of three millimeter. Okay. So um, briefly speaking, the echocardiographic morphology of PFO is a high-risk feature uh, PFO according to our um, measure that we um, define in our hospital the high-risk PFO with a, a, a presence of hypermobility of interoceptin during agitated cell line test and a, 
uh, the diameter of uh, maximal uh, PFO size of two millimeter or more, which we uh, think we have to discuss more uh, 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 according, uh, uh, considering the definition of high risk PFO. So um, uh, I think we have uh, lots of things to discuss for the indication of uh, PFO closure, uh, device closure for these patients. I'm very happy that we have urologists here, uh, cardiologists here. Uh, so, um, would you um, please start to discuss about this case? Any comments? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, there are several issues in terms of indication of PFO closure. First one is uh, uh, age. Uh, she is uh, 72 years old, right? Right. Right. And the second issue is uh, she has uh, suspicious repeated episodes of TIA, not uh, s uh, demonstrated in stroke in MRI or other imaging modality. Right. right. Dr. jong Sun Kim, do you have any comment on this? Um, it's a very controversial case, as you know. Uh, from neurological perspective, I'm not sure whether she has a really a brain problem. So you said that some neurologists say, said that this is TIA. It, it may be me, actually. No, but not you. Not, not, okay. <laughs> That's very good. Because they say gate disturbances, transient gate disturbances. It's a very, a very vague term. Of course, it can be caused by brain ischemic attack, such as a more transient motor dysfunction, sensory dysfunction, transient ataxia. But it can also be caused by other causes, such as sp spine disease, peripheral, peripheral nerve disease, joint disease, especially in old cases. So when we see some small dot in the brain MRI, we can be more sure about the vascular origin. But again, MRI shows nothing. So from the beginning, I'm not sure whether this is a TIA or not. Uh, and of, of course, other problems, such as a PFO size and morphology, I, I cannot say that because you are more expert. So that's my, I have some doubt whether yes, this is an indication yes. for TPFO. Actually, she was transferred from the southern part of uh, our country, and the reporting diagnosis was a TIA by the neurologist in that hospital. And this patient and the family members were very worried about the recurrence or the development of a stroke. So, I would say the patient and family, family members are very committed to the doing something which is not uh, uh, usual. And uh, morphologically, we have confirmed that this patient is a typical example of a high-risk PFO. So uh, it's a quite controversial uh, cases, I would say. Dr. Yes, do you have uh, any idea? This is also very... Uh, this is very controversial cases, I agree. And uh, of course, the PFO in the transesophageal echocardiography, PFO imaging, this is a, I, I agree for this is a high risk PFO. But uh, the patient developed the TIA only. So the, in this situation, without uh, uh, MRI imaging, for the positive uh, MRI imaging, we're very worried about the two indication for the PFO closure, at least. Even in the TIA, we need for the uh, diffusion-weighted imaging, for the positive uh, di diffusion imaging, uh, diffusion-weighted imaging. So that is a minimum requirement for the, our indication for the PFO closure. So in, in terms of your the, the anatomical the, the scoring system, how do this, uh, the, does this uh, the PFO yeah, this is score. more than score, uh, score high three. score, yeah. So high score. Actually, yeah, there, there has been you know, some 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 report that the arterial sept septal aneurysm mm -hmm. and uh, the high in elderly patients may be associated with uh, the stroke risk, even mm -hmm. though this patient doesn't have any the, the imaging the features of uh, the stroke uh, yes. due to PFO. Yeah. So definitely, the PFO is high risk, but uh, we have n no. Exp the evidence for the benefit of a PFO closure at this age and uh, just the uh, uh, symptom of the TIA. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask one question to the cap panel? I would like to ask that. Sorry. Yeah. 
uh, because the age, another controversial issue is the age of this uh, lady because she is 72 years old. So <clears throat> according to the different uh, registry or study, like uh, respect, uh, reduced peer study, all this kind of study, the mean age is about 45 to 50. Mm. Yes. So I'm not sure whether the, the clinical study, even though the, the result is good, whether the result is applicable to uh, our patient today. So this is another controversial mm. issue for this age of lady. I 100% agree, but in the, there, there has been had some multiple reports that uh, especially the, even though in elderly patients, the, in, in presence of arterial septal aneurysm, mm. the PF4 may be pathogenic. Mm. In, yeah. So actually, as the PF4 device close and live demonstration is very simple and very short, <laughs> we have intentionally <laughs> chosen this case for <laughs> discussion. And uh, so, Dr. Pyeong Lee, so let's say uh, the patient and family members agree what we would like to provide, or what we expect the, some benefit with the procedure. What is your next uh, strategy for this case? So. Um, I, I think we ha we all have to admit that there, although we had we have we have had um, uh, positive results of large sized randomized controlled trials recently, there still is a very large area of uncertainty on the indication of PFO device closure, especially for this patient. So, uh, considered on TIA. Uh, I think we have to point out the previous uh, inclusion criteria of RCTs because the recent positive ones, the respect and the closure, uh, closed trial and um, uh, gore reduced trial, they all excluded TIA. But unfortunately, the previous ones that failed, including PC trial and closure one trial, they included TIA. So inclusion of TIA uh, failed, you know, but um, just including the cryptogenic stroke a definite stroke event um, uh, shows superiority of uh, PFO device closure over medical therapy. That is one thing that we have to concern. But still, we don't know. Because um, those RCTs are uh, very, very hard to conduct uh, uh, to prove uh, uh, a device closure uh, uh, for the prevention of uh, recurrent stroke events in patients with TIA. I think that's one point that we have to uh, consider. The second one is so that. So, what about the. Peter, you showed it to interrupt, but what about the reimbursement issue from the government? Mm -hmm. TIA is listed as an acceptable indication in Korea? Yes, in, uh, in Korea, uh, uh, for the secondary prevention of TIA or stroke, it's, uh, it's uh, reimbursed by the government. But that. That's, um, yeah, I, I was involved. I was involved in the making the, the reimbursement uh, guideline. At that time, uh, the, the actually many of the, the RCTs were included the, 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 the TIAs. Right. So, but then now maybe they may uh, reconsider right. about yeah. the, the some TIA. But so huh? I have a question to Dr. Song. Yeah. Yeah, so in uh, defense uh, PFO trial. What was the, the highest, uh, the oldest patient involved? 79. In 79. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, <laughs> the only the, the RCT, recent, uh, the second round RCT that included uh, the older pa elderly yes, patients? Yes, in defense PFO, I think we can have another opportunity to present, to show our data. The, yeah. There is no age limitation. Yeah, which, which is, is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you, so this kind of the age, age over the 70s, how do you exclude for the, the silent atrial fibrillation? How, how, how do you the, evaluate for that, that atrial fibrillation? That's a good question. So we are doing the second uh, clinical study mm. to use the long-term, long uh, monitoring system to exclude paroxysmal or short duration of atrial fibrillation, mm. especially in old age, because the prevalence of AP increases significantly, mm -hmm. exponentially, according to the age. Mm -hmm. But for our defense PFO study, our neurologist, our partner, Dr. Jong Sung Kim, determines everything. Okay, <laughs> this patient needs <laughs> device closure. <laughs> Cardiologist, we are just the slaves of the neurologist. <laughs> do it, uh, just do it, then we just follow. So. 
What about your personal opinion about the TIA as an indication? You're tossing the blame to me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> because uh, in all the cases, of course, neurologists are very uh, uh, actually worrisome about including including some uh, some some vague cases. So usually we we send the patient to you when the even if they they are old. Um, there is no risk factor, first of all, with the, with the ex extensive card cardiac workup, including aorta athero atheroma, no such a thing. And then the, it, there's a, should be lesion on the M deficient with MRI, especially in, in the cortex, embolic origin-like cortex, cortical lesion, mm -hmm. and without any, any clear uh, re reason for the stroke. And especially when we do, when we give antiplatelet, when they are recurrent stroke without AFib, then uh, PFO could be the uh, actually actual cause of stroke. So in that strict cases, we send those patients to you, not vague cases. Yes. So you are reluctant to send the patient with the TIA? Uh, especially th these cases, no MRI things. Mm -hmm. And TIA have many, many uh, symptoms. But sensory symptoms with a very weak evidence for real TIA. Okay. Okay. Motor, speech disturbance, there are stronger evidence for TIA. Mm -hmm. So TI is not is, is very heterogeneous. Okay. Just to get ataxia, I, I'm not sure this is mm -hmm. strong evidence for a vascular origin. To be <clears throat> clear with this patient, um, did this patient have symptoms when he was under antiplatelet agent or was he under not on under antiplatelet agent? Uh, she had symptom, symptom under not. And actually, um, uh, they, uh, the other hospital physicians gave her aspirin. And after they documented large amount of shunt, uh, uh, according to the C, uh, TCD, they added a clopidogrel. So she, she's currently taking DAPT after the uh, TIA event. So after the dual antiplatelet treatment, she didn't have any symptoms? Oh, not yet. That, that was right? only June, so two months ago. Okay, we are ready to enjoy your uh, skills. <laughs> okay, I, uh, so I will pro uh, proceed the procedure. Um, so we have uh, introduced seven French sheath in her groin. And um, actually we um, give... So uh, the patient is under general anesthesia? Yes, the first case TE, we are, yeah. Right? We are doing TE under general anesthesia. And um, we have gave her um, uh, 5,000 international units of heparin. So um, just crossing the uh, intraatrial septum is always a concern. But actually, uh, in our experience, we also, uh, in this kind of high-risk PFO uh, uh, lesions, um, uh, there won't be any uh, or less concern uh, passing the intraatrial septum. So uh, sometimes we just uh, pass the, oh, like this, intraatrial septum. With the wire, that means that, uh, uh, which, I, uh, which the finding there, I think it is important, uh, also uh, indicating a possibility of high-risk PFO. So this is a Teflon uh, wire with uh, MP uh, catheter. I'm going to put this mic uh, catheter to the left upper pulmonary vein, like this. It changes wire to Ampla stiff. So, um, considering the device selection, uh, actually, the morphology of PFO is quite important. So, we um, determine the PFO as high risk PFO or non high risk PFO, uh, considering the risk of a stroke recurrence. But in uh, considering uh, in terms of the procedure. Uh, we uh, divide this PFO morphology as simple or complex uh, in terms of the uh, completion and perfection of the device closure. So as um, uh, Dr. Lee mentioned, uh, this patient has uh, little or uh, no, no turner morphology of PFO. The second thing is that the, uh, septum, the thickness of septum primum and the secundum is quite similar, there's no size discrepancy. Uh, so, I, so I would like to say that this uh, case would be a simple PFO case, so that we selected uh, usual 25 millimeter of 
uh, careful device. Um, back to your size of the device, will you measure the length of the tunnel? Because sometimes if the tunnel is long enough, mm. more than 15, then 25 mm device may not be cov may not be have a good cover. Mm. So will you measure the length? Because you just told us that the width of the PFO is 3 mm. How about the length of the PFO tunnel? Actually, uh, we don't um, measure routinely the length of PFO. But, so um, you would use uh, 25 for all, all the PFO device? Oh, not the old you one. You would choose 24, 25 for all? No, no, not the old one. Uh, of course, um, if the PFO has a, a complex morphology, especially when the interactive septum, the premium length is very long, and um, uh, a, a prominent energy change with um, hypermobility, we consider the larger size. We would do a balloon sizing? We do not do balloon sizing in our hospital. <laughs> Actually, the, P, the tunnel, tunnel length of the PFO is a usually echo measure for the maximum length of the tunnel. Try to, try to measure. But the actually PFO is a 3D morphology. Some part of the tunnel is very short. Right. So the, usually the measurement is a tunnel length is a maximum tunnel length by the TE. So this is not the case, but uh, in, uh, in, uh, in many patients with complex PFO morphology, balloon interrogation provides uh, many uh, the benefits. Mm. So not in this case, but uh, balloon interrogation uh, gives idea or maximum stretchable mm. the, the diameter as well as the, the tunnel length in the long tunnel time, as well as whether the PFO tunnel can be uh, the squeezable or just, uh, the tunnel length can be the shortened. Right. So uh, uh, in this case, I agree that uh, you don't need uh, some balloon uh, interrogation, mm -hmm. but in many cases, uh, balloon interrogation gives um, some um, many advantages. Right. So you, in your institution, you are using the balloon interrogation as a routine process? Actually, default proce uh, process. Uh -huh. But uh, in, in this kind of uh, uh, the morphology, I wouldn't uh, the, do the, the balloon interrogation. But uh, my personal communication with many uh, the, some operators who have uh, some thousands of cases, Many of them are the routine the balloon sizers. Oh. Like okay. ASD, right? No, n even though they don't use uh, the balloon sizing in ASD, PFO, oh, they, they use, use it. yeah. Oh, I see. The proposed, the proposed of the balloon sizing. Yeah, even in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the, now, uh, now the echo, transesophageal echocardiography already can measure for the say, distance between the septum secundum and the edge of the uh, long sheath. That is a, that actually is almost equal for the balloon sizing diameter. Okay, I think <coughs> Dr. Pyeong Lee is ready to open the RA disc. So Dr. Sungari, can you show us the more clear image with your RA disc Okay. okay. Yeah. So okay. I want to emphasize so that um, we should not uh, feel too much tension, a gentle tension toward the iterative septum, because sometimes if you just push uh, with a large power, then the, some, some border of the uh, LADs can go in through the uh, intraceptum passage and it, it will uh, result in a bad morphology. So gentle... Dr. Yeah. Sungali, my cable view would be better than okay. this one. Okay, we have our disk there. Okay, okay. right here. So actually, this cocoon device is, um, is not a bolt type. The connection is a screw type. So before um, deploying the device, this uh, morphology uh, would not be optimal. But um, in our experience, um, I think uh, before the deployment, this morphology is quite uh, good. And I expect a good uh, final position after deployment. Dr. Piryong Lee. So, Teiji, uh, in the meantime, may I ask you a question? Sure. Do you have a PFO device in Japan? Now it's approved, but the not, not uh, the reimbursement. 
So no reimbursement. reimbursement. So you you have used the Calibri form instead of uh, the PF. Yeah, but that, that mm. now it's already approved, so that we had tried not to use the Calibri form. So would you t tell me, the, tell us uh, your personal some experience uh, the, in terms of a regular shunt using PFO device versus uh, the Calibri form device? Yeah, that's a good question. The, actually, the complete closure rate is uh, significantly higher than the, the PFO device is much more the variable for the complete closure. Majority of the cases for the Calibri form still have, once you do the valve maneuver, bubble test, that some regular shunt <coughs> happened even in a one year after. Okay. Okay. So I think the rim uh, the, the aortic rim and the posterior rim is well uh, noticed within the disc, so uh, I would like to deploy it right now. So, Dr. Lee, the, uh, in this view, short axis view, right. the RA disc is uh, the, a little bit encroached onto the aorta, which means that the retro aortic rim was uh, a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So, would you do, do you have any concern on the some such a finding? Well, um, 25, well, well I, uh, we have um, some uh, concerns always when this um, device disc uh, uh, encroaches the aortic rim because of the possibility of erosions of something like that. But uh, because um, uh, in our experience, PFO, and uh, uh, according to the literature, PFO device rarely um, induce some kind of complication with the, with, uh, with the aorta. So, uh, actually, personally, I do not have any concern. So, so but uh, in the, the some IFU from the San Jose Medical, previous San Jose Medical, the IFU, the, they, uh, the, they recommend not to use uh, some larger device which with uh, the, uh, the half of the diameter larger than the, the retro L2 rim, mm -hmm. and uh, also the, as far as I know, the, there has been a two case reported uh, uh, by the, after the PFO closure with the, with the device, so the, which developed the erosion. Yes. So uh, there is no, uh, uh, maybe very little, less than the ASC devices, but uh, there may be a concern on that. Yes, yes. Okay. Dr. Pirionik, what is the total number of device closure in our institution? Uh, PFO plus ASD. PFO, PFO close, uh, first, uh, plus AS, ASD. During the, I think, nine years recently, we have uh, closed about 350, 400. And um, the PFO closure uh, rate is growing rapidly recently. Okay, so it, it, it may be our limited experience, but in our institution, we only experience two uh, traumatic erosion after AS device closure, not PFO. Mm. Mm. Yes. Hopefully, after your <coughs> comment, I'm very worried about actually, that. Actually, <laughs> among my uh, uh, yeah. the experience uh, uh, reaching uh, 2,000 cases, okay. actually there was no proven erosion case. Okay. One, one, in one case, in the, the CT scan, follow-up CT scan, the radiologist uh, <coughs> the, uh, told that the, Maybe it is uh, the something like look like uh, the impending erosion, but though on the, in the operation field, the device was not eroded into the onto the, the cardiac tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have prepared two cases, so I think this is the first great, very challenging with the, the many discussions about the indication. The second case, uh, okay, Pirongi, thank you very much for your excellent job, thank and you. Uh, we will come back again if we have time.